Hey, it's Mr. Shrum. And today we're gonna to talk about cellular transport. So what does that mean? What's happening? Well, the plasma membrane, like we talked about last time, is the thin layer of protein and fat that surrounds the cell. It is the material that divides the inside of the cell with the outside. The plasma membrane is semi-permeable. It is also referred to as selectively permeable. This means that it can select which substances can cross through the membranes easily. And other things uh, may need to be uh, brought over through more complex processes like osmosis, diffusion, exocytosis, or endocytosis. Small molecules such as oxygen and carbon dioxide cross the plasma membrane easily. Osmosis. Water passes through the membrane by osmosis. Osmosis is the diffusion of water across a selectively permeable membrane. Normally, body fluids are isotonic to cells. Isotonic means that there is an equal balance of dissolved solids, solute, solutes, and water, solvent. This balance on both sides of the cell membrane helps to maintain the usual size and shape of the cell. When this balance is disrupted, osmosis occurs. It's all about returning to a, a sense of balance. Osmotic pressure is the force exerted on a selectively permeable membrane because water has moved from an area of higher to lower concentration of water or higher concentration of solute. A hypoosmotic uh, solution, also known as hypotonic solution, is when there are more dissolved solids within the cell than outside the cell. This causes water to move into the cell. The cell could then swell and burst, which we call that as lice. Hyperosmotic solution, also known as hypertonic solution, is when there are more dissolved solids outside the wall, outside the cell, than inside the cell. This causes water to move out of the cell. The cell could then shrink or crenate. And here we have the uh, pictures. So isotonic, where they're both balanced. Hypotonic, there's more dissolved solids in the cell, hypertonic, there's more dissolved solids outside of the cell. So hypotonic, water's coming into the cell, hypertonic, water's moving out. Diffusion. Dissolved solids or solutes do not pass the membrane through osmosis. Osmosis is only water. Uh, these solids are transferred through diffusion. Diffusion is the movement of molecules from an area of greater concentration to an area of less concentration until they are equally distributed. And there are two different diffusion pathways. One is facilitated transport. Two is active transport. Facilitated transport is when proteins in the cell membrane move a molecule from an area of high concentration into an area of low concentration. Because the molecule is moving downhill, no energy is actually needed. Molecules that use facilitated transport include amino acids and sugar. So in this diagram, we have the extracellular space. So a space outside of the cell. And here we have intracellular space. This is inside the cell. 
Okay, and then we have these little protein channels. Active transport is when proteins in the cell membrane move a molecule from an area of low concentration into an area of high concentration. Because the molecule is moving uphill, energy is required. Whereas uh, this facilitated transport, it kind of just happens on its own. Uh, but this requires energy. Cells involved in active transport often have many mitochondria which provide the needed energy because they are the powerhouse of the cell, that's right. Examples of molecules that use active transport include amino acids, sugars, and ions. The action of the sodium potassium pump is an example of primary active transport. And we'll learn a bit uh, about that later. Proteins involved in active transport are often called pumps. And we're gonna learn more about sodium and potassium pumps later, like I just said. Cells may also use endocytosis or exocytosis to move things into or out of the cell. Endocytosis is when a portion of the plasma membrane engulfs the substance so it can enter the cell. Let me zoom in and see if you guys can see that better. Is that, is that okay? Okay, here we go. Here's the phagocytosis. We have a solid particle outside of the cell. Then the plasma membrane comes up. It surrounds it, brings it into the cell. And now it's a phagosome or a food vacuole. And then we have pinocytosis uh, and then receptor mediated endocytosis. Exocytosis is when a membrane bound vesicle within the cell fuses with the plasma membrane to empty its contents to the outside of the cell. Therefore, exocytosis causes substances to exit. Think of that as an easy way to remember. In endocytosis brings things into the cell. Exocytosis brings things outside. It exits the cell. So in summary, the plasma membrane serves as a border around the cell. It is selectively permeable, meaning in order for substances to move in or out of the cell, it usually needs to use one of these pathways, osmosis, diffusion, exocytosis, or endocytosis. And that's it for cellular, cellular transport. <laughs> Can't speak today. But uh, hopefully you learned a little something about the cellular transport uh, processes. And until next time, have a great rest of your day slash week, and I will see you all later. Bye-bye.